Celebrating 30 years of phenomenal trend forecasting, five times a week, Monday through Friday. Here's Gerald Salenti with today's trends in the news. Hi, this is Gerald Salenti. Thursday, June 11, 2015. And here are some of today's trends in the news. Well, yesterday you got trends this week. And very shortly next week, you'll be able to get the entire conference that we had here last Saturday at Colonial Kingston, featuring Nomi Prinz, all the president's bankers, Dr. Arya Maidenbaum, an expert in aging, what to do about it, and to age gracefully and keep growing as you keep growing older. And a lot of takeaways with that. Of course, I did a whole session on some trend tracking tips, the global nomic strategy, how to track and forecast trends yourself. Gave you some of my insights. And we had Tim Malcolm here again. He's great about millennials, the myths, and the realities, how to profit, how to stay away from the hype, and where it's leading, and much, 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 much more. So you'll be able to get that starting next week. Great video, nothing like it. And on to the markets. Well, over there in Asia, the Nikkei was up, the Shanghai was down. And over there in Europe, oh, the markets were way up, and then they went flat on the news that there is no deal in Greece. But yesterday, you remember in the States over here, the market was up over 230 points because of that Greek deal. It ain't going Greek, huh? Yep, yep, yep. And today, the markets are only up about 30 points. And again, what are they going to do with the Greeks? If, if they stay in or stay out, how's it going to affect the United States? It's such a tiny percentage of the Euro group. It's hype, that's why. Because the real news is, front page is the Financial Times, rich countries to resume growth as developing nations stumble. This is going to come as a shock. Developing countries are facing a structural slowdown, likely to last for years, and are ceding their role as the world's growth engine to more mature economies, such as the United States, according to the World Bank. And here's where the shock is going to come. Sit down, take a deep breath. The Washington-based bank yesterday lowered its forecast for global growth this year to 2.8%. They always do this, man. They're always lowering their growth projections. They put them out, they get a boost, and then they come back and lower them. The World Bank said its twice yearly report that with the exception of India and a few others, the bank warned that developing economies such as China must confront an era of slower growth. Nomi Prinz at this presentation, she is dynamic and a dynamo. She laid it out. She met with all these people. She, met with the, she was a guest of the Federal Reserve. She spoke to the World Bank and IMF people. She said they don't know what they're talking about. Coming right out of her mouth. She was there. They're making this stuff up. Get this in your head, World Bank. If it's bad for China, that means it's bad for everybody. Because if the United States isn't buying and the Europeans aren't buying, that means China's not making stuff. Nor the rest of the world in terms of cheap labor. And those countries that like to export natural resources, hey, China's not buying them. Who is? So, you got it right there. And remember yesterday with oil prices, well, again, another day, another story. Oil prices continued to decline on Thursday due to a stronger dollar and a gloomy economic forecast by the World Bank. Wow. Oil prices had drawn support on Wednesday from big falls in U.S. stocks, meaning oil stocks, as the market has gradually tightened up after many months of heavy oversupply. And a stronger greenback makes dollar price commodities more expensive for buyers using other currencies and tends to weigh on oil prices. Hey, wait a minute. That's called inflation, isn't it? 
some ways, yes. But there is no inflation, remember? They just talk about deflation. Again, put it together. You have the story right here about developing nations stumbling. These developed nations took in a lot of debt. The dollar is going stronger. They have to pay off their debt in dollars because they borrowed that money with all the QE was going on. So you can see where this is heading. And it's not a pretty picture. The retail sales came out in the U.S. And boy, did they blow them up on the media because they're blowhards. And they like to blow hard on... Oh, come on now. That ain't even bullshit. That's horseshit. That's what they do. Here's the headline. U.S. retail sales surged. Woof! They surged in May as households boosted purchases of automobiles and a range of other goods, even as they pay a bit more for gasoline. Retail sales increased a grand total of 1.2% last month after an upwardly revised 0.2% in April. Overall retail sales last month were buoyed by a 2% jump in receipts of auto dealerships, creating another bubble because they're selling cars to people who can't afford to pay for them. Sales at service stations, because the price of gas went up, rose 3.7%. And Real big strength in electronics and appliances, they gained 0.1%. And sporting goods increased 0.8%, and sales of building materials and garden equipment advanced 2.1% because it's summertime. And here's the number sales at restaurants and bars nudged up 0.1%. They're flat. So how are they showing all of this job growth in the hospitality sector? Bartenders and waitresses. So something's wrong here. And the big wrong is billionaire luxury chief says wealth gap is unfair. In a speech Monday at the Financial Times Business of Luxury Summit in Monaco, Johan Rupert, he's the CEO of such companies, they include his, his conglomerate, Alfred Dunhill, Van Cleef, and Arpel, along with Cartier and Piaget. He said, inequality will accelerate in the coming years due to the growth in structural unemployment coupled with a new imbalance for global winners, he said. This will cause, quote, envy, hatred, and social warfare. We can't have that point. 1% of the point, 1% taking all the spoils. So 0.1%, 0.1%. Now, folks, those are our clients. But it's unfair. It's not sustainable. I don't know what the new social pact will be, but we'd better find one. Otherwise, our clients will be targets. They'll be hated, despised. This is a rea really what keeps me up at night because people with money will not wish to show it. If your child's best friend's parents go unemployed, you don't want to buy a car or anything showy. We are destroying the middle class. It will affect us. It's unfair. Keeps you up at night? You know what I say. When people lose everything and have nothing left to lose, they lose it. It's time for the billionaires to become de Medici's. Start putting your billions into beauty. Start putting your buildings into peace and prosperity. Start putting your billions into places where they're going to build people morally, spiritually, physically, intellectually. They're not like the Gates Foundation that does drug deals all over the world. Oh, and speaking of that, they're passing that legislation in California. That's right. If you don't get your kid vaccinated, it doesn't go to school. What's the deal here, man? If you get vaccinated and you think that your kid is now not going to get a disease, 
So the kids doesn't get vaccinated, gets them. That's none of your business. It is their business because that's the business of America, to be in everybody's business. They just passed a stupid law in California where now they got to put warning labels on soda pop cans and bottles. That this stuff is dangerous for your health if you drink a lot of this crap. Anybody that's too stupid to know that, they can't read. Of course, you got to put a warning label. People know what they're doing. It's their choice. They want to destroy themselves, destroy it. But I don't want to pay for it either, one way or another. And over there in Europe, Putin went to visit Renzi at the Milano Expo. Uh -huh. Yep. And so Renzi joked with him. I hope our national team will give you some sorrow, at least in sports. The 40-year-old former mayor of Florence joked, doing his best to disregard the cloud that has hung over Russia's hosting of the World Cup in 2018 since the FIFA corruption scandal broke. Here's prostitute language. Mr. Putin lapped it up describing Italy as a great partner in Europe and touting the tight relationship between the countries over the past five, 500 years. Lapped it up. Now, James Pulte, you are a lappa because you is a prostitute, and that's what you do. You lap, you suck, you bow down, and write crap like that. Lapped it up. He goes on. Ever since you, EU began imposing sanctions on Russia last year, Western diplomats have nervously regarded Italy as a possibly, possible weak link. For Mr. Putin, the star-studded Milanese treatment may offer opportunity to prove to his domestic audience that he is far from the diplomatic outcast and that Western countries are not as united as they may seem in confronting Moscow. Ah, he has to convince the folks back home, huh? Well, here's something for you, Junior, lapdog. More than 80% approve of Mr. Putin has handled relations with the U.S. and EU in Russia, while 63% say their government respects their personal freedoms, a rise of 18% since 2008. Do you think 63% of Americans say that their government respects their personal freedoms? Doubt it. James Pulte. Yeah. Putin's not playing for home. He's playing for keeps. Because here's more stuff here in the Financial Times, the New York Times. Toilet paper propaganda. Increasingly frequent calls on Baltic. The Russian Navy is back. The Russian Navy is back. This guy reported a captain of a fishing boat. Adding that the Lithuanians also had a warship in the area. But the intrusion, one of four this year by Russian warships into the cable laying zone, blah, 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 blah. Then you turn inside. A Royal Air Force jet bottom accompanied a Russian IL-20M reconnaissance plane over the Baltic Sea, where Russia has been conducting naval exercises. What's an English jet doing in the Baltic Sea? How come the New York Times isn't talking about all the NATO exercises going on in Russia's doorstep? That's how they get you to hate them, because they are prostitutes. And Kiev prepared to stop paying sovereign creditors. Little story over here. Hey, but when Argentina can't pay, it's a big story. But when their buddies can't pay, let's not talk about it so loud, all right? Big crisis over there. And by the way, in the same poll, <laughs> just a third of Ukrainian respondents think the Kyiv government is having a positive influence, a 15-point decline over the past year. This is pure research. <laughs> the shift is mark particularly marked in Western Ukraine, where those seeing the government as a bad influence has increased from 28% to 54%, and... Poroshenko's approval rating is at the grand total of 22%. I'll tell you, it's because of them Russians, right? <laughs> yeah. No, it's because the whole thing is collapsing. 
and they're making it seem like it's Russia's fault when it's the fault of the people in charge. And just some quick other notes. U.S. troops to set up new base outside Ramadi in Iraq. How's that for no boots on the ground, huh? Border crossing migrants stray in Europe. From Syria, 122,000. Afghanistan, 41,000. It's just this year. Uh, Eritrea, 36,000. And Iraq, 21,000. So there you got it. More war, more problems, more migrants, more destabilization. Why talk about peace? We do. And again, we need your help to make it happen. This is Gerald Salenti. We want to occupy peace. Dot US. No war. Don't want to go to war no more. This is today's Trends in the News.